Wings to Fly is a children's book about gaining confidence and working to succeed, told from the perspective of a young girl who loves to play basketball. She is often left out by her teammates until she meets her guardian angel who teaches her that success takes perseverance. Wings to Fly is a great read for all children. I would highly recommend this book. If you would like to make a purchase, please click on the link in my description box below. Larry Davis was born May 28, 1966. He grew up in the Bronx, and before he began a life of crime, he always had a knack for music. Larry was the typical young black male who grew up in the 80s who struggled financially and eventually turned to selling dope. Larry ended up connecting with some dirty cops and some dirty detectives. They made a deal with him that when they confiscated drugs from other drug busts, Larry would sell those drugs for profit for both he and the cops. But this type of deal wasn't only just for Larry. There were hundreds of brothers who were just like Larry Davis who made these deals. Not only did they resell those same drugs that they confiscated, but they were also bringing drugs in. This is how they were flooding our communities. I mean, you had district attorneys in on this. You had detectives. You had the cops. You even had judges. I can go one even better. The US military was in on this. Everybody was eating off this. But you know who are the criminals? Us. Go back and watch my videos on the war on drugs, parts one and two, where I go a little more in depth on this. Part three will also be coming soon. See, Larry was responsible for paying off a lot of cops, a lot of people in law enforcement. See, these people were putting their kids through college. They had all types of payments, even admitted through court cases that they were making more than $8,000 a week. So when Larry said he wanted out, that's when all the madness started. See, Larry knew too much. He had too many receipts. They wasn't just about to let him walk away, knowing that he can actually bring them down. Plus, like I said, they was about to get ready to take a huge drop in pay. So they wasn't about to have that. They wanted Larry dead. It all began on a dark November night, the 19th, when a team of police officers assembled outside a Bronx tenement. They believed Larry Davis was harbored in the apartment of another sister, and they wanted him for questioning in the slang of four reputed drug dealers in late October. I stick my head out, and I can see the cops there, and they begin firing, trying to hit me in the head. And uh, they had machine guns, too. They were spraying up. The whole wall looked like Swiss cheese from the holes, they were just shooting, shooting, just shooting randomly. So I already had a visual perspective of where they were because I had already looked out. So then I grabbed the bedroll off the back of my sister's closet, which is right there in the hallway. And I said, I'm gonna use this as a decoy to, to make them think I'm running out there. So I threw it and they began chasing it, shooting it, the bedroll. And when they did that, I came out and I fired and I had hit one point blank blast in the face and I caught the other one on the floor because I already knew where they were. The 21-year-old Davis is charged with nine counts of first-degree attempted murder, all stemming from a wild shootout with police two years ago. Six cops were injured. Davis escaped but was captured 17 days later. Since the trial will pit the black defendant against white police officers, he claims we're out to get him. Kunstler admits he's been trying to get a mostly black jury. Once he was apprehended, they tried to book Larry on all types of trumped up charges. Like the original so-called charge for the reason that they came looking for him in the first place, 
Derek was a stunning legal upset. In March of 88, 16 times. Larry Davis was acquitted for the killing of four Bronx drug dealers. dealers. Not guilty of robbery. In November of 88, he was acquitted for shooting all those police officers. Why? Because of evidence, ballistics, and admissions. We had proof that there was a bullet found in the back apartment that had gone through a drawer. Uh, he fired the 12 gauge. It grazed me here, as I would indicate here again. It grazed me here on the top of my head. But how do you prove that that was the first shot? How did you prove that this was? And we hadn't been able to get any cops to say that anybody was carrying a shotgun in the initial group that rushed the apartment. They all said, oh no, they had handguns, oh no, they were the only emergency service had shotguns. Nobody had a shotgun, nobody had a shotgun. It had gone, skimmed Larry's head, stuck in a desk, and it had two holes. And I remember the day that with lasers, we checked out the trajectory, and Lynn Stewart looked at that, and she looked at it, and she looked at it, and then she says, now we know why it was self-defense. Ralph went, and Peter DeForest, who later played a very great role in this case, went also to the apartment. And Peter DeForest is the head of uh, forensic sciences at John Jay College now. If that gun had been fired from so many feet back, it would have to be fired in the air, following the trajectory of the bullet. And she walked it down to a place where it could be held in a man's hand. And he says, and this is where he was when he fired it. He was down the hallway, in the bedroom, and it was a sure shot because Larry wasn't more than four or five feet from him. And he fired, and it creased Larry's head, and he took him down, and then he backed off, and everybody let it go. And as Lynn Stewart pointed out, nobody runs down the hall to a man within four or five feet of a man who's firing at you. Larry hadn't fired a shot when that slug creased his head and took him down. And that is, of course, what truly won the case. That and the ability of a Bronx jury to hear the truth and not run away from it. The verdict was a stunning legal upset. Not guilty 16 times. Not guilty of murdering four reputed drug dealers. Not guilty of robbery. You say you find the friend of Larry Davis. Say you find the friend of Larry Davis not guilty of all counts submitted to you, and so say you all. In December of 89, he was acquitted for the murder of a Harlem drug dealer. But in March of 91, he was convicted of killing a drug dealer from the Bronx. And he was sentenced to 25 years. On February 20th, 2008, Larry Davis was stabbed to death by an inmate named Luis Rosado in Shawagunk Correctional Facility. They tried to take him out. They wanted him dead. He fought him off, but he ended up being killed in the prison fight. R.I.P. Larry Davis. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Please follow the History With No Chaser Facebook and Instagram pages.